What's up guys, Axis and Alloys back here. We just finished round five, Global War 1939. The war is finally kicking off in Russia, so we're gonna start right there. Germany poured across the lines of the Soviet Union, taking East Poland, Bessarabia, Eastern, uh, no, Western Ukraine. And they also used their special um, attack ability where they put all their units at a plus one, all the Russians at a minus one to take Karelia with Finnish forces and German forces. They also took Murmansk as well. Uh, this is a major development um, because it's really setting in motion uh, the main theater of the war. We have a large German buildup in the south and that's gonna bulldoze right in. Uh, they're gonna be able to take Kiev or Kursk and Ukraine on the border with Russia next turn. Hopefully it'll be enough to take out Russia. Uh, next, we're going to move a little bit more east here to China. China's gone. Um, Communist China is no more, and Japan has steamrolled them. It seemed like, you know, a couple turns ago they wouldn't be able to push, but they're pushing all right. They're going to be able to take Novosibirsk in uh, two turns. Excuse me. Um, using their major factory in Siam, built 10 infantry, they are going to take Calcutta. Uh, at some point in time uh, but I mean two fortresses there and a ton of infantry so right now they're just plopping down stacks of infantry uh, because that's what they need to do they need to get get land forces on the ground because they have a medium-sized air force they moved their fleet to take uh, New Guinea and then also in place on Caroline Islands this is gonna allow them to strike Hawaii uh, the USA did build a carrier and two fighters uh, because, you know, when you have a massive Atlantic fleet, you kind of need to back it up with a Pacific fleet. Uh, Japan's going to be taking Hawaii and hopefully the Philippines uh, on the next turn uh, just because, you know, they, they have to sneak attack them sometime. The USA uh, is up to 80 per turn uh, thanks to what happened in Russia. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on how the rules work here. I'm pretty sure it's like G40 in which they're at war at the end of their turn. But again, no one really declared war on them. So um, I'm gonna allow Japan to use their sneak attacks on Philippines and Hawaii, assuming that they're like now at war. Um, but I need to read a lot closer into the rules than that. Um, but t speaking of Japan, uh, they are building up a fleet. They built a Yamamoto battleship and a loaded uh, carrier. Uh, they moved a carrier up. Um, and this is because Japan once you secure this theater, right, you can push into Russia and you can worry about the Soviets here. But, um, you know, the Soviets are at their full income, have been for a turn. Um, they need to just, you know, recapture some of these islands and just make sure the USA stays FA. I mean, they only have a carrier here, so it's not going to be terribly too much to attack. Um, but they should be uh, fairly successful. Um, this is another view of the Eastern Front here. Um, I was deciding between Karelia or Leningrad to attack for the Germans. And I said, well, I would rather take Karelia because of the factory there than Leningrad, even though it's a victory city uh, and it's got a fortress and everything. Um, reason being is I would rather take the place where they make their units than just the city. Um, I think it'd be more important to stop their production than to, um, uh, to just take a, you know, a city they can just take back. Um, but Germany has been able to bomb um, other parts. Uh, they didn't bomb this turn, but they do have bombers up here ready to conduct in strategic bombing. Speaking of bombing, the UK lost a bomber bombing Western Germany, but inflicted five damage on it. Um, the Germans on their turn built a ton of infantry. Um, obviously these units here are mobile and they can move to the front, but these units here are part of their Atlantic wall. Uh, the UK landed from troops from Canada and their transports in 23. Uh, they landed in Normandy. Um, it's seven infantry and an artillery. The Germans should be able to beat them back, but that's why they built a fighter. That's why they're trying to get uh, more units here um, because they need, uh, they need to be able to, to crank out more production and more defense, um, which is really crucial. Um, so the officers are going to need to be able to, to use these factories and really crank some units out uh, because... Now that the USA has entered their full production. I mean, look at this fleet. I mean, this is a, an impressive fleet here. Um, you have three battleships, a loaded carrier. Uh, you have six transports ready to go. You have three strategic bombers uh, and an airborne infantry that they can use and pair drop them in. Um, 
I mean, this is a very formidable fleet. Uh, it might only be six transports, but that's certainly enough. They can head over to Bordeaux on this turn. Um, that's what they're probably going to do. Uh, the UK infantry is making its rounds. It's going to be taking Peru and then Chile uh, and then potentially Mexico. This is all just to get the UK some extra income, uh, you know, maybe deal stuff with Argentina. Uh, they moved up their units into uh, Morocco and then moved the French infantry from West Africa into Rio de Oro. Um, the Italians strengthened their foothold by two infantry. Uh, so they're going to try to make an attack on Gibraltar. Uh, they might wait and wait for USA support to come. Um, but we will see. Uh, the Italians took Tunisia. And they are uh, really committing to Cairo now. Uh, they built uh, a tactical bomber and moved and consolidated all their units in Alexandria. I really just wanted to see what they had. Um, they built three infantry. And that should help out a lot. They have three transports ready to go. That'll be able to ship off... Um, two infantry and if and uh sorry four infantry and two artillery um and a tactical bomber add that into the fray they also strap bombed for six uh cairo um and so this should this should prove very beneficial for them uh seeing as the uk doesn't really have much of a strain of units coming through uh this carrier can be threatened by a japanese sub right there um so Although Saudi Arabia and Iran is under the control of the UK and they're going to take Iraq the next turn, uh, I hope the Italians can pull out some victory here uh, because taking Cairo would really solidify the, um, the Axis stronghold here as they continue to ward off UK attacks. Um, so as an uh, allied player, I'm really hoping for this USA to make a difference. But as an Axis player, I'm really looking to see, um, really looking to see some, some proper... Uh, proper defense defenses be put up because I think they can take Russia out. All right. Well, this concludes all of the, um, the recap. I'll give you guys a quick look over at the board. Uh, if you're interested in that, uh, any comments or suggestions for future videos, please do leave them below. Uh, after this game, uh, definitely going to invite some friends over to play. Uh, cause you know, solo games are fun, but having friends is, is better to play with than just going against your own strategies. Um, but, um, after that, I'm not really sure what I want to play. Uh, we could do some zombies, some Axis and Allies, uh, um, Classic Europe, uh, could be another game of Global, uh, if any of you have ambitions and want to, want to try your hand against me, I'm sure you'd do quite well, uh, let me know, we could schedule a, uh, a YouTube war sometime, so I appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in today. This is Axis and Alloys, signing off.